Welcome to this presentation today. I've organised a group presentation to help facilitate uh, professional support within the aged care facilities because as you are all aware, uh, you're all going to be tasked with the job of providing good care to the residents within the aged care facilities across the district. Um, my name is Sue Barber. I'm a registered nurse as well as a podiatrist employed here in the district as a podiatrist to um, organise training for um, nurses as well as podiatrists and to look after students within the um, uh, profession of podiatry. Um, if you're looking for the toilets, um, mm -hmm. out this door here, down the hallway there's a males and a females toilet. Um, tea and coffee making facilities are out this door. We'll have morning tea, lunch and afternoon tea, but please feel free to go to the toilet, stretch your legs if you should need to during the session. The plan for the session is that we will separate out into groups, uh, one RN and two or three ENs or AINs per group, and we'll uh, have a little bit of a discussion and answer a few questions that I have uh, develop just to get you thinking along the lines of what we're going to teach today. Um, the training, then we will reconvene and I'll give you a theoretical component of the training. And we'll have a little bit further discussion about what answers came up um, for the questions. The direction of the training today is to look at the creation of a sterile field. Now it's not sterile as in operating theatre sterile, it's really just to give you an idea of what's a clean and dirty environment and how you can protect your patients by maintaining the, ASEP, the rules of aseptic technique while you're treating them. The other thing we're going to look at, which is another very important thing, uh, as we all know, is hand washing. We need to make sure that everyone is up to date with their hand washing techniques knows why it's so important to wash their hands and is able to maintain that um, in their practice. The other thing, of course, we're going to look at is nail care and how uh, we go about cutting nails, what's the right and wrong way to cut nails, why we have to cut nails, um, and we'll watch a few videos throughout the day on uh, these, these techniques. Um, as you know, you're a group of RNs and ENs. Um, um, I've told you how we're going to split the groups and answer questions. Uh, I've made provision and will make provision throughout the day for um, obviously AINs are trained and enrolled nurses and RNs are all trained differently, therefore have um, differing bodies of knowledge and bring to, get, bring to the uh, training different skill levels. But also you all have a background, so you've all got something to contribute to this group. So please feel free to open up and feel comfortable to answer questions to the best of your knowledge and share your work experience uh, with the whole group because everyone can benefit from everyone's input. Um, so obviously, this training is just a precursor to ongoing professional support. Uh, if at any time you feel like you need to contact me for further um, clarification about anything that we've discussed today, or if you want me to participate in or be present in your, um, your practicing your new skills or applying your new knowledge, please contact me. Um, I'm always contactable by, by email and I try to get back to you within 48 hours. So in order to be here today to deliver this training, I've um, had discussions with uh, supervisors and managers to find out what it is that they uh, need for you guys to know in order to be able to deliver uh, safe foot care to residents on an ongoing basis. So if I can just get you to um, split into groups now of about three or four, an RN uh, in each group if we can, um, grouped up with an AIN and an EN and if we have any people left over then we'll fit into the groups as we need to. But we just need to have one RN and a representative of ENs in each group.
Okay, so the first thing that we're going to talk about is a sterile field. Uh, I've got a picture of a sterile field here for you. Um, what I need for you to do is to um, take a um, semi-permanent marker and just mark on that sterile field where you think the clean areas are, where you think the dirty areas are, what you would uh, consider to be something that would need you to start to reset the whole sterile field should it be contaminated. It's just to get you uh, being aware of where the clean areas are on your field. And I also want you to consider why uh, we need to pre prepare a sterile field. Um, um, yeah, basically, why do we need to pre pre prepare a sterile field at all? Because um, aren't feet dirty? They're at the bottom of your, your legs and, and they're not really that dirty if you're lying in bed all day. So why do we have to worry about an aseptic technique for foot care? So I'll give you a bit of time just to do that and then we'll talk about that. Okay, you finished that? So, uh, I can see that we've marked all the areas of the sterile field. Um, and some of the questions that came back, um, some of the answers that came back to, you know, why do we prepare a sterile field was to protect the patient, and that is very correct. Um, to protect the health worker, that's correct as well. So we are doing this in order to protect both of us, um, but in, in particular the patient, because um, in the process of cutting toenails, you can cause small wounds. And if you don't have a sterile field or a clean field set up so that you know that there's no um, flora from your own skin or bacteria on the instruments, um, then you can introduce infection into these small wounds that you may or may not create. But the resident might have a wound that you don't want to transfer bugs into in the process of your care. The other reason that we, we as well as providing quality care and the reduction of infection, it's also public liability insurance is a big thing these days. And if you're um, ever called into a court of law, you can say that this is how you prepare your field, this is how you maintain a clean field, and you know that um, if there's questions raised about whether or not you introduce an infection, you know that you've got your uh, procedures in place. Um, so, what is a sterile field? It's a specific area that is considered free of microorganisms. Maintaining a sterile field is not an easy task because there are many chances to breach the sterility during the setup and maintenance of the sterile area. So, when you're, when you're preparing a sterile field, you need to follow a specific procedure. You need to open a sterile pack uh, in a specific way. So you need to wash your hands with soap and running water for at least a minute. Then you need to uh, use the special flap to pull back the paper wrap um, around the sterile pack. So in the case of um, podiatry instruments or nail clippers, you um, place the, the package on the, the bench that you're working on, open it up, and then don't touch inside that. That then becomes your sterile field. So if you need to add anything to that sterile field, what you need to do is um, open the package gently by pinching each side of the sterile packet and tipping the implement into your sterile field. Then you throw that wrapper away. And if at any time during, well, when you cut the patient's toenails, you can, you can place those nippers back onto that field, but nothing else from the environment or your hands should be touching that field. It should be only what you've touched the patient with should, should go back onto uh, that field. So you can have a primary field and a secondary field. The primary field is, is um, where you keep things that have not touched the patient, and the secondary field is where you've cut the nail. If you need to put the instrument down to do something else, 
you put that in the secondary area. I've just got a video here of um, the preparation of a sterile field and please bear in mind that this is for a surgical environment. Um, when we're cutting nails in an aged care facility like you guys will be doing, it doesn't have to be as strict but the, the principles are still the same. seem to be working for me. Yeah, that's good. Well, we're going to have action here. Okay. Put it on the screen. So you might just have to go to the computer. I'm going to be chest picurology and I'm going to be demonstrating a sterile field setup. Before setting up a sterile field, make sure that you are in a closed room and that there's no other patient traffic. Next, you're going to disinfect all the surfaces that you're going to be using. Up in the outer edge. Okay, so this lady is preparing a sterile field. To do that, she's washing her hands first. But I just wanted to point out she, she should have her hair tied back so that there's uh, little to no risk that any of her hair will fall into the sterile field. Uh, another thing to note is that she's got fake fingernails on and they're a no-no in the health system. So they actually are a potential area for bacteria to uh, reside. We'll just continue with this uh, video. You want to make sure to wash your hands thoroughly. In between your fingers. Your wrist. So you notice she's got fake nails there. And down to your elbow. Okay, and you're going to rinse thoroughly. I'm just going to fast forward through this because we've got a uh, hand washing video to watch after. I'm going to start to set up the sterile field. I'm going to take the first sterile field drape. This is a non-fenestrated drape, meaning it doesn't have a hole in the middle. I'm going to open the drape. So that's how we open up the instruments for the with the clippers, the packet with the clippers for podiatry uh, instruments, and we place that on the surface. Ideally a firm surface if we can find a firm surface. Pick up the corner. Just let it drop. Then I'm going to inspect my package to make sure that there's no punctures and also that the indicator has changed. It will tell me my instruments are sterile. I'm going to very carefully open my pack, being careful not to touch the sterile field. Drop the instruments. Most sterile fields will also call for some sterile gauze. Just going to pull the top off. Drop it. Just notice how she threw that onto the sterile field. She didn't touch the sterile field with the outside packet of the uh, gauze. Drop it on the field. I'm going to finish opening my supplies here. So at this point, I'm going to open my gloves. These are sterile gloves. Before touching it, I'm going to go wash my hands thoroughly again. And now I'm going to glove. I'm going to open my gloves, touching only the outside of the tabs. I'm going to draw the local. I'm going to let my lid drop. So 
So we don't need to worry about sterile gloves when we're cutting toenails, they're just clean gloves. always waist high. Never brush up against it or reach over it. If you accidentally do any of these things, you need to start the whole process over because you've contaminated your field. This concludes the demonstration of a sterile field setup. Sharps 
um, can sharps, injuries and contamination to, the, to any of your staff members or patients or visitors. So, of how every surface area on the hand, even uh, including between the fingers, is rubbed with the solution and the water. to remember to keep your hands well away from your body while you're washing your hands. Now, most sinks that you come across in Queensland Health will have the stages of hand washing on the wall nearby, so if you're ever stuck, you don't have to remember the uh, phase is in order, you can just refer to the charts on the wall or just ensure that you get every surface um, at a certain amount of time in the process. Take off the nail. 
because uh, we can cut them too short and we can leave them too long. So another question I get asked regularly is do we cut the nail straight across? So I want you to give a bit of thought to that as well. Um, what happens when we ne neglect our feet also is another thing I want you to have a think about. So if um, we'll get together in a group, give you five minutes to do that and then we'll go through a video which is um, a very good explanation of nail cutting techniques. So how are you going? Yep, yeah, that's good, that looks good. Very good, very well done. Now we're just going to move on to a video. Um, and uh, this video will bring our session to a close. And then after we have some morning tea, we'll get together and actually go through the practical session, uh, practical component of this training. But we'll just have a look at the video now. about patients, uh, especially my patients that are a little more mature in age and need adverse food care. Why do you adverse food care? Well, what we're trying to do is try to prevent wounds and sores and growing toenails. If you look at these food models right here, I tell my patients at the very end, uh, God gave you a brain, use it. If you're having any type of sores on your feet, so when we were uh, in the process of answering the questions, um, the answers that, that you came up with why we cut nails, um, you considered it to, to be so that the nails look good and that they feel comfortable. The other thing, as, as the doctor has alluded to here in the video, is that it reduces um, the potential for wounds on the feet and it also reduces the potential for the resident to um, produces skin tear if they decide to scratch the, the shin or the back of the leg on the uh, opposite side. Um, or this could occur while they're sleeping as well. Um, so they are the reasons we cut nails. And obviously what can happen if we neglect our feet, you guys came up with pain, ugliness and smell it. They'll be smelly. Um, the other risk is infection. Um, and injury to the opposite leg and uh, the causation of a wound on that leg. This video goes through how much nail we cut off but the answers that came back were all of it and one, mil one millimeter. Um, the right and the wrong way, your diagrams look pretty good but we'll talk about that, um, we'll have a look at the video for that and he also touches on whether or not we cut straight across in this video so We'll just go back to him. In between the toes like this, or if you're having what we call a hard callus or a paloma dura, or a soft callus, or an ingrown toenail, get those things looked at. You know, a person can have a, a small maceration on their foot where the skin becomes white and have a small little fissure. Once in a while, a person can get a back. That's one of the reasons why we have a toenail properly. People laugh at that, but really in all honesty, this video helps one person from having a fissure, maceration, ingrown toenail, gangrenous lesion. For me, that's worth doing the video. So I'm actually going to show you how I normally do it. I, I have real high-end, high-quality Miltex nippers, and what I do is I actually trim the toenails, and I'll trim a couple of them here. And before I start, I want to show you this. This patient actually had an ingrown toenail on the medial border of this left gray toe, what happens is these toenails start to curve inward like this, and when they start to cut, cut, cover, or come in inward, what happens is the toe starts to become painful. This can be caused from thickness of toenails, it can be caused from bone spurs, it can be trimming toenails wrong, there's various things that... So that, I want to flag that trimming toenails incorrectly can cause ingrown toenails. So it's very important to make sure that we we um, cut the nails correctly and don't cause an ingrown toenail for our um, residents. It can cause 
uh, toenails can become ingrown. But if you look at this right here, I take a real sharp nipper, and typically it's painless if it's done right. But you go in here, and for me, I like to trim them um, with not much curvature to them. Now, there, I get a uh, little bit of curvature to it, but everybody's nail is a little bit different. Some patients can have a little more curvature when you're trimming them, some people cannot. Some people have to have them trimmed straight across, and every patient that comes in here has a different need. So when you're trimming these toenails, you've got to make sure that you're going to keep them from having a bone toenail in the future. Okay? So, this is kind of the way it's done, and then when I'm through trimming the nails, I use a nail vacuum. Now, if you're looking at this toenail that I'm about to trim, right in here, okay, obviously she's had a ingrown toenail removed. I actually use a laser to remove ingrown toenails, and you can actually watch one of those videos on YouTube as well. But if you if you take note, he hasn't cut the nail back too far. There, he's left a little bit of length on them, but uh, they're not over the edge of the toe. You look at this one, the chance of her having another major problem or an ingrown toenail is really low. Now, you're removing that border. It may not look cosmetically as well as it should. However, the chance of her having an ingrown toenail are incredibly low. Okay. You'll come across people who have had uh, ingrown toenail surgery in the past um, and they have had a failed ingrown toenail surgery so they've got regrowth of nail or they've got uh, a lot of scar tissue in that area. The nail will also be what we call dystrophic or thick and really difficult to cut. So that's something to be aware of and mindful of um, if you come across uh, that really thick nails and lots of scar tissue. Nail burr in every room. Not only do we have a nail burr, we actually have a vacuum on it. I like vacuums for, for several reasons. One, you don't have the dust. So you're unlikely to use a uh, drill, but if you do, please ensure that you wear gloves as well as a mask, even if you're using a vacuum drill. That you normally would with a uh, with a nail burr without a vacuum. Secondly, I think you can get it so much smoother. So when the vacuum turns on. What happens is I can get these pretty much smooth as well. So if you watch right here. you to use an alco wipe before you do the nails and after you've finished doing the nails that just helps to prevent um, bacteria entering if the under the nail has been a bit soggy it can be a bit inclined to be um, uh, at risk of getting infection but also if you've caused any micro trauma with your instruments or your nail file it helps to um, prevent that from happening this right here here with alcohol. Uh, there's no burrs, there's no jagged edges on it. And typically patients are very happy. You know, you don't want to have a, a woman come in here and she gets her hose snagged or anything like that. Um, you don't want to uh, have any problems with sock rubbing on it, but that looks much better than when we started. Okay. Thanks guys. Appreciate it. Bye bye. of fungal infection or a bacterial infection and it's quite painful and if you make it bleed again uh, puts you at risk as well as the, the resident at risk. 
So someone else has asked, um, what happens, what do we do if we contaminate our sterile field? Well, if you contaminate your sterile field after you've finished your nail cutting procedure, then that's okay, you just discard the whole lot. If, you're, if you still have to touch the patient with those clippers and the clippers are contaminated, then you need to dispose of them and start your sterile field again or your clean field again. So if you put a hole in your gloves, you need to stop the procedure. You don't need to um, create a new aseptic technique if you've discovered the hole straight away. But if you discover the hole, um, place things to the side, go and wash your hands again, new gloves, and continue the procedure as you were going. Yes, yeah, so someone else has asked if um, thick nails. Thick nails are the same. You cut them the same, but you just um, approach them in a little bit of a different way in that you don't, um, you use the very tip of your nipper and cut a tiny bit at a time because some thick nails you don't know if there's uh, how far up the nail bed has come and whether it's nail or thickened nail bed that you're actually dealing with and if you um, cut too much nail off and find the nail bed is underneath you can, that can be quite painful for your, for your patient. Okay so that any more questions? No? I'm here anyway after morning tea if anyone or during morning tea time if you want to come and ask me a question, please come and ask me a question. No question is a dumb question and I'm contactable following this training today. So please don't be a stranger and make yourself known and I'm here to support you professionally so please make use of that. Thank you.